I didn't go into this trip realizing what an intensely physical and mental challenge I was going to be putting myself up against. What I ended up finding is that the entire time I was there, I was constantly in a state of pushing myself to the edge, both physically and mentally, in terms of facing fear, uh, facing the limitations of my stamina, facing the limitations of daylight, uh, and reliance upon other people. So I found myself again and again in these situations where I might be hiking out uh, across the lava fields or out to a remote beach or across the volcano or through the rainforest um, where once the sun went down, I would basically be in pitch blackness without a guide, without any uh, ability to find my way back necessarily by myself with no cell phone service and uh, really kind of finding myself uh, more than once on the brink of uh, will I actually make it back? What if something happens to me? What if I all kinds of things ran through my head. What if I fall and sprain my ankle or break my leg? Um, you know, what if I fall down a crevasse? What if this volcano that I'm on suddenly splits open? I, I kept hearing stories about uh, the lava shelves falling into the sea where one day um, there can be a big uh, chunk of land and the next day acres just uh, fall right into the sea, they break off. So I did not expect to find myself put in these positions where I, where I really felt um, that I had to face some fears and the fact that I was doing this by myself was a big part of that. Uh, but I was putting myself in these situations again and again, seemingly every day. Whoa. I'm here. I made it. Thank you, Pele. I'm on the base of the caldera, the base of the crater, volcanoes, national park, and there's steam rising from the floor. The sun's just going down. Whew. Just made it through a little rainstorm. I knew that this trip was going to teach me a lot about the elements, but I didn't realize how much I was going to learn about guides. Guides have shown up to me on this trip in many forms, and they're there to help point the way when you're on a journey, to help you to realize that there is a path 
where sometimes it doesn't seem like there's one. When I was walking across the base of the Kilauea crater, you have to follow stacks of rocks to find the sometimes hard to see path. But what I've noticed on a few of the hikes that I've taken on this trip is that it is oftentimes the hikers up ahead which make the best guides. While walking across the crater floor, a man came up behind me. He was running and he continued off into the distance. And though I couldn't see him for very long, he allowed me to see where the trail lie up ahead. And I realized a guide like this can only help you as long as you can keep up with it. At other times, I've had animals, birds. This colorful wild bird showed up two times on this hike, both times with his partner, a male and a female. And plenty of times I've followed the Apu from one place to the next. Sometimes it's simply following in footsteps. Ultimately, I didn't come to Hawaii just to go on hikes and see volcanoes. I came for a reason, and that was a pilgrimage. And my pilgrimage was to the Naha Stone. So I had first learned about the Naha Stone probably about 20 years ago. And it is a legend of Hawaii which says that a great lava stone was brought to the big island from the island of Kauai. And this stone was used to determine whether or not children born to the natives were of Naha descent and Naha was said to be a royal bloodline. So women would place their newly born babies upon this large lava rock and if the babies were quiet then they were deemed to be of Naha blood. This was at a time when each of the Hawaiian Islands fell under their own tribal leadership and they all warred with each other. Each one was its own separately held kingdom. And the legend stated that the person who could move this giant lava rock, the Naha Stone, would rise up to become the king of Hawaii and would unite all of the islands under one ruler and bring peace. And that is the legend and the history is that King Kamehameha in the 1700s did rise up and unite all of the islands under his leadership. And he is said to not only have moved the stone, but to have gotten up under one side of it and actually flipped it over onto the other side. So when I was younger, I always knew that sooner or later I was going to have to visit this Naha stone, which was still there in Hilo. And uh, now that I'm older, I realize that it's not just the Naha part of it, that makes it interesting for, to me. 
Now it's also the stone part of it. Now that uh, stones are something that I work with daily uh, for their healing properties. And now that I have an understanding that stones also can hold information, they can hold stories, they can be storytellers, they can be absorbent of everything that they have endured, everything that they've been through. So my purpose now going to the Naha Stone was so much deeper than just out of curiosity. I'm here in Hilo and I'm now walking to the Naha Stone. I'm finally headed that way. And I decided to drive down to the water. Part of that was due to lack of sunscreen on my behalf and not needing to do another mile and a half walk in the sun. So instead I'm doing a couple blocks walk, but it's funny because now that I'm down here, I'm totally taking my time and I feel like actually looking for distractions. I don't know why, I feel like I'm a little bit nervous. So I'm not getting to the spot uh, too quickly. I stopped by a tattoo shop just to see what was what. I stopped by a bookshop and picked up a few books. Uh, I actually found an old uh, copy of Seership by the Yogi Publication Society. So that Rosicrucian book publishing company. So I picked that up and another book called uh, Your Inner Wizard, which is a book on hypnotherapy. So I thought both of those were interesting. The um, proprietor of the bookstore looked at me and said, huh, not light reading, is it? So uh, I'm on my way now to find the stone and I should be there any minute. Look at this giant banyan tree. Isn't that amazing? Here's the Hilo Federal Building. And I believe it's just a couple more blocks up. Across the sea and from the depths of a crater and a place of sacrifice. And the end of a rainbow. destination for any pilgrimage, a holy place. And the road, and many roads, a destination all leading to one place for any pilgrimage, aligned with the stars, spread by word of mouth. A holy place, a meeting point, blessed and made sacred, in the five roads leading to the stone, in many roads, 
understanding to one place from five kings from five tribal leaders aligned with the stars second stone and a throne You have to follow stacks of rocks, which the Hawaiians call Ahu. And these were traditionally built in reverence to Hawaiian deities, but they're also there as markers and their guides. I followed the road to the end, and when I got there, all of the guides were waiting for me.